all of you i hope i'm audible and visible please give me a quick thumbs up if my audio video is fine to all the dear students sachi abhi raj dr gk tremadol dr tarek nana yogesh quads everyone give me a quick thumbs up if my audio video is fine a uh, very very good afternoon to all my dear students i hope you have missed the classes yesterday and day before yesterday so we are back again with the one liners very important for any sort of exam whether it is inict fmg or neat pg so i request all my dear students to please follow all my classes these are very very important for your entrance examination so i think everybody knows me uh, you you all must have attended my classes so i'm dr cheshta agarwal your neat pg educator and i teach dermatology on this platform i have scored all india rank 261 myself in my neat pg entrance examination you are on the best online app that is an academy for your preparation i request everybody to please download the an academy learning app and start watching the free stuff today itself now we have a uh, two type of paid subscription one is plus which give you an access to uh, an academy live classes from the top educators i think everybody knows that on an academy we have top educators of all the subjects we are actually having the toppers of their respective exams with us on this platform so i request everybody to please be a part of it now you can access an academy live classes by taking a plus subscription which give you the options of 3 months 6 months or one year or longer subscriptions in iconic we have an access to both an academy and prep ladder an academy give you an access to live classes at uh, what i have told you just now with prep ladder you have a clinical integrated essential you have video recording dream notes questions etc so if you take iconic subscription it is a complete package and i request everybody to please if you are trying for the next year exam it's high time when you take a one year of iconic okay ji now uh, special classes uh, like what you are attending right now they are very similar to plus but they are little brief compared to the plus or iconic classes we have a highly effective question bank of around 25000 plus so all the students they always uh, ask us for the question bank previously we had only questions there were no discussions or explanations but now we have along with the questions the uh, detailed explanations of all the answers and uh, you know all the options has been explained properly we also have another feature which is known as raise a hand that if you have any doubt you can directly ask the educator by raising your hand you can record the question and that can be heard by the educator on the same time there are many new batches which are in the line of getting started this is a very hot favorite for all the students i've seen a good number of admissions for this batch which is uh, scheduled for 20th of october i request all of you to please be a part of it okay because uh, don't think that abhi to bahut jaldi hai why should uh, we take a uh, uh, you know subscription of neat pg now please remember the neat pg 2022 is expected little earlier you can expect it any time in february or march so please don't waste time in thinking you have six month you will not know that how the days will pass so please be a part of it using the referral code jstar10 you will get additional 10% discount and i request all of you to please be a part of it now another is the clinical case discussion and instrument batch this is a pure clinical for final year students i recommend this batch as well for a final year mbba students now these are some of our top learners who have actually believed or trusted an academy for their preparation and actually they have landed up with a very nice score in their neat pg entrance examination now uh, i want all of you that your faces should also be here as the toppers and let's start the preparation today itself if you have not started yet now how many of you were present in my last one liner session anybody who have attended my one liner session so this class will be a continuation of the, those one liners if you have not done it uh, i request or i recommend all of you to attend that class that was on saturday i think the timing was same 2:30 pm so please go and see the recorded session of the one liner part 1 as well now let's begin with the first question of the today's session all of you will give me a quick thumbs up everyone we have 50 students to begin with i want this number to go on increasing so we will be little bit quick with few discussions along with all the questions first question is on your computer screen from leprosy amazing very nice histoid leprosy is non nodular diffuse form seen in relapse of leprosy facial leonina or common in central america which of the following is correct
fascia leonina common in central americas relapse or non nodular form now all the pg aspirants inict aspirants this is a very important question Histoid leprosy, it is a variant of leprosy which is seen in relapse cases. What do you mean by relapse? Either patient stops medicine or MDT or patient develops resistance against one of the multi-drug therapy for leprosy. In both these cases, he suddenly starts to develop multiple, multiple means the number can be 5 to 50. Painless, asymptomatic nodules all over the body. So please remember, it is the nodular form of leprosy. It is seen in relapse. Facial leoni is seen in lepromatous leprosy, while common in Central America is lucio leprosy, not the hysteroid leprosy. Now please give me a quick thumbs up if you are clear with this particular question. Everyone will give me a quick thumbs up if you are clear with this question. Rameshwar lepra bonita. Lepra bonita is a term given to lucio leprosy, not hysteroid leprosy. Okay? So lepra bonita is different, which is common in Mexico or Central America. That is lucio leprosy, not hysteroid leprosy. If this is clear, I request a quick thumbs up from everyone. Please give me a quick thumbs up. This is another question on your computer screen. Please tell me the answer. In a patch of vitiligo, melanin synthesis is inhibited. Melanosomes are absent. Melanocytes are absent or melanocytes are reduced. In a patch of vitiligo, melanin synthesis is inhibited. Melanosomes are absent. Melanocytes are absent and melanocytes are reduced. So only 50, uh, no, 44 percent of the total students have uh, answered this. Now tell me one thing: Have you ever seen a case, patient or a case of vitiligo? Yes or no? Just tell me the answer. Have you ever seen a patient of vitiligo? The answer should be yes, either in the images or actually in the day-to-day -day clinical practice. Now, please remember, in vitiligo, you see complete depigmentation, complete white patches. So it cannot be reduced melanocyte. It has to be absent melanosomes or absent melanocyte. And why it is absent? Because they have autoimmune T lymphocyte directed against them. They have autoimmune T lymphocytes directed against these melanocytes. Understood all of you? So you have complete loss of melanocytes on the sites of vitiligo. I hope this question is clear and there's no confusion with this one. Chaloji, let's move to the next. Now you have to tell me which of the following skin changes is not a feature of hypothyroidism. Which of the following is not a feature of hypothyroidism? Very nice. Uh, Shapnik, Vedashti, Dr. Giri. Then we have Dr. Jasmine, Shrishti, uh, Dasharat, Akhil, Quartz, Bindu, Taufik, Ravi, Tara, Dr. Sultana, PJ, Rameshwar, Dr. Surya, and Satish. Very well done, all my dear students. Skin changes in hypothyroidism is characterized by all except the correct answer is palmar iridema. In hyperthyroidism, you have increase in the BMR. And because of increase in BMR, you tend to see erythema on the periphery. While in hypothyroidism, you see cold periphery because of vasoconstriction. Understood? So all the other features are seen in hypothyroidism. Can you tell me what is the sign of Hertogi? Anyone can tell me what is the sign of Hertogi? Have you ever heard about this term? Sign of Hertogi, yes, it is the loss of lateral one third of the eyebrows. What is Orentiasis cutis? What is Orentiasis cutis? It is the yellowish discoloration of the skin because of deposition of beta carotin. So, Orentiasis cutis is yellowish discoloration of the skin, which is a feature of hypothyroidism. It occurs because of deposition of beta carotin. And everybody knows that dry, coarse hair means dry, lustreless skin. All these are the feature of hypo, except for palmar erythema, which is a feature of hyperthyroidism. Clear with this question? I hope there is no confusion. Let's quickly go to the next question. Which of the following is the specific lesion for acne vulgaris?
Which of the following is a specific lesion of acne vulgaris? Very well done. I think everybody knows about this. Please remember, comedones is something which is very, very characteristic of acne vulgaris. Can you tell me, burrow is a specific lesion of which condition in dermatology? Burrow. Burrow is the specific condition for scabies. You will never see burrow in any other condition. Can you tell me, target lesion is a specialized lesion seen in? The answer is iridema multiforme. So please remember the specific lesions like comedones in acne, burrows in scabies, and target lesions in iridema multiforme is the answer. Okay, G. Can you tell me which is the rarest variety of pemphigus? Which of the following is the rarest variety of pemphigus? Dr. Tarek, Abhi, Lega, Samira, then Manu, Priyanka, Swat, Shrishti, Taufik, Aruna, PJ, Tara. Lavanya, Nana, Bindu, Sachi, Bilal, Shiva, Surya, Insan, Dr. Giri, Kepki, Dr. Sultana, Yogesh, amazing all of you. And I, I hope if you have given this year NEET PG 2021, we had an option of Pemphigus vegetans in that. Okay. So Pemphigus vegetans is the rarest variety which presents with vegetative growth in the flexures. Vegetative growth in flexures like axilla, groin, etc. And this is considered to be a rare variant of pemphigus group of disorder. Clear with this question? Can you tell me which of the following drug is implicated in drug-induced pemphigus? Anyone? The drug which is implicated in drug-induced pemphigus. Penicillamine, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, or aminoglycosides. The drugs which are implicated in pemphigus group of disorder. Very nice, Dr. Rashmi, Abhi, Shatnik, Quartz, Neet, Ketki, Priyanka, Bilal, Samira, Vedashri, Dr. GK, Dashrat, amazing all of you. Very well done. Please remember the drug most commonly implicated in drug induced pemphigus is penicillamine. And can you tell me it will resemble which type of pemphigus? Vulgaris or foliaceous? The drug-induced pemphigus, the clinical feature secondary to penicillamine, can you tell me it will resemble what? What type of pemphigus? So Pragya, Ravi, and Manu, they all are saying it is pemphigus vulgaris. Please remember the answer is pemphigus foliaceous. They will resemble pemphigus foliaceous lesions. And how pemphigus foliaceous lesion differs from pemphigus vulgaris? In pemphigus foliaceous, we rarely see any intact bulla. We see scaling and crusting. While in vulgaris, we see flaccid bulla. So please remember, all my dear students, that drug-induced pemphigus resembles pemphigus foliaceous. Okay? And yes, there is absence of oral cavity lesions. Clear or not? Everyone will give me a quick thumbs up if this question is clear. Okay, G? Understood? Now moving to the next question. What is correct about leprosy control program? This is a question which is common to PSM, uh, you know, common to even the dermatology, uh, in fact, microbiology also. Very nice, very nice. What is correct about leprosy control program? What is correct about leprosy control program? So very well done, Dr. GK, then Shrishti, Ravi, Tade, Gauda. The correct answer is option number four. Now, the National Leprosy Eradication Program, it says that you don't need to do any uh, hi-fi investigation for making a diagnosis of leprosy. Pure clinical features will give you a, a indication or will, will give you a a uh, hint of starting the MDT in the patient of leprosy. So you need not do any slit smear for starting the therapy. You have to start the therapy simply on the clinical diagnosis. Whenever you have reaction, you always need to continue the multidrug therapy. You will never stop it. And please remember, thalidomide is used as a preferred drug. No, you have steroid, which is used as a type 2 drug because Thalidomide has a lot of teratogenic potential. So all these three are the wrong statement except option number four. Clear or not with this question? Please give me a quick thumbs up. 
very very easy question i guess amazing the most common manifestation seen in the patients of end stage renal disease the most common cutaneous manifestation seen in the patients of end stage renal disease what will be the answer pigmentation pruritus half and half nail pseudoporphyria very nice manu vijay shiv uh, neet pg dr rashmi dr giri dr sultana dashrath abhid vedashri bindu very well done please remember the answer is pruritus now all these four can be seen in a patient of end stage renal disease you can see pigmentation you can see pruritus half and half nail and pseudoporphyria but among all these four the commonest is pruritus the patients will come to you with the complaints of itching can you tell me what will be the treatment for the itching secondary to end stage renal disease will you give antihistaminics to take care of itching here please remember the answer is no here there is no role of antihistaminics you have to give the drugs like opioid inhibitors naltrexone you can give urso deoxycholic acid which also works very well please remember there is no role of antihistaminics in the renal or end stage kidney disorder induced patients clear everyone will give me a quick thumbs up if this is clear very very interesting and easy okay the next question is on a computer screen again from leprosy tnf alpha is strongly associated with pathogenesis of tnf alpha is strongly associated with the pathogenesis of now can you tell me one drug which works against tnf alpha anybody can tell me the name of that drug because if you answer that drug i think the question becomes more easy for you to solve anyone uh okay so that is correct i'm not asking about biologicals please remember i'm not asking about biologicals you are right there are infliximab adalimumab as so many drugs or so many biologics okay but i'm talking about a drug which is not a biologic but it works very well against tnf alpha please remember the answer is thalidomide thalidomide works very well against the tnf alpha and you all know that thalidomide is used for type 2 lepra reaction so type 2 lepra reaction has tnf alpha strongly associated in its pathogenesis so it is vice versa thalidomide is used because tnf alpha is very very frequently associated so please try to remember all these three points uh, the reason for using thalidomide why it is used only in type 2 not in type 1 because there is no tnf alpha in type 1 or reversal reaction reversal reaction means type 1 lepra reaction clear next question is on your computer screen after giving the treatment for syphilis the response is best assessed by very very quickly please answer this question very nice i can see around 65% of students till now who have answered this question correctly ravi tarik quads samira then we have lega shatnik manu uh, shrusti goda very well done all my dear students please remember the correct answer for the question is option number 2 whenever you want to assess the patient the treatment assessment is always done by non treponemal test and what are the non proponemal tests that is vdrl and rpr can anybody tell me or can anybody tell me the reason behind this why i am not using treponemal test like ftabs tpha or tpi why i am only using the non proponemal test for assessing the response anyone what is the reason behind this so what in sam if it is serological what what difference does it make please remember the non treponemal test reduces with time if you start the patient on the treatment it reduces with time okay it reduces with time but the treponemal test that is fta abs tpha and immobilization test it remains positive for a long time 
it remains positive for a long time. False positive in non-venereal treponemal test. See, there is a risk of false positive, but see if you if on starting the suppose you start uh, penicillin and if you see that the VDRA titer are reducing, you can also be sure that you are treating the right diagnosis or you are giving the right therapy because the VDRA will reduce with time if you start the patient on penicillin group of drug. Clear all of you? Please give me a quick thumbs up if you understood this one. Okay, G. Badia. Can you tell me least propensity of lymphatic spread is seen in which of the following cutaneous malignancy? Now, least propensity for lymphatic spread, please remember it is basal cell carcinoma. Either lymphatic or hematogenous, both of them are very, very least in basal cell carcinoma. And that is why it is a locally invasive, also known as, also known as what? Rodent ulcer. It starts destroying the tissue which comes in contact, not the distant site. It keeps on destroying the surrounding uh, tissues. How many questions are done? I have no idea how many questions are done. So anybody is keeping count on the questions, I have no idea how to count it. So yes, there are many students who have uh, kept a count. It is 11th question. Chalo, very nice uh, if somebody is keeping a count. <laughs> okay, Chalo ji. Which of the following cutaneous manifestation of tuberous sclerosis usually presents at birth? Chagrin patch, facial adenofibro, uh, facial angiofibroma, ash leaf macules, or gingival fibroma. Which of the following is the cutaneous manifestation, or which cutaneous manifestation appears first? Can anybody tell me what is the alternate name of tuberous sclerosis? I always ask this question. What is the alternate name of tuberous sclerosis? Please tell me the answer. Bone villet disease. Very nice. And can you tell me what is the mode of inheritance? Autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-link dominant, X-link recessive. Anyone can tell me the mode of inheritance? Very nice. It is autosomal dominant, not autosomal recessive. Please remember it is autosomal dominant mode of inheritance. Very, very good. The first uh, cutaneous manifestation is ash leaf spot. The first feature which you see is a depigmented lensolate uh, macule all over the body, which is known as ash leaf spot. Presence first. Which of the following is the drug of choice for dermatitis appetiforme? This I think everybody knows. Everybody knows this question, right? Amazing, amazing. Shatnik, Priyanka, Manu, Jasmine, Insam, Ravi, Lega, Yogesh, Quads, Aruna, Gauda, Dr. Surya, Samira, GK, Shiva, Dr. Rashmi, Tara. Very well done. Then Cheeks, uh, Rituraj, Taufik. Very nice, all of you. Please remember the correct answer of the drug of choice is Depson. Can you tell me what is the treatment of choice for dermatitis appetiformis? Is it same as drug of choice or something else? Very nice. It is the diet restriction. And what should be restricted? Bro. What is bro? Barley, ray, oat, and wheat. Please remember R is not for rice. R is not for rice. Very well done, all my dear students. I'm so happy that you all are answering these questions. BP-180 is target antigen in all of the following autoimmune disease except, again, it's a sort of repeat question. We had discussed this, I think, uh, three to four days back. BP-180, which is the component of Lemina lucida. On an average, only 50% students are those who answer the question, and they are always the same. 
rest 50% are not able to answer the questions again telling you that dharma caters a lot of mcq 13 out of 200 is something which is very very good number so if a dermatology like subject which is a very small subject giving you so many questions please start studying it take my subscription take my code today and get your subscription start reading it very well done all my dear students we have 44 percent who have answered this bp180 is seen in pemphigoid group of disorders like mucous membrane pemphigoid bullous pemphigoid and even in pemphigoid gestationalis can you tell me what is the target antigen in Pemphigus foliaceus. Anyone? Target antigen in Pemphigus foliaceus, it is Desmoglein 1. Very nice, which is an intercellular adhesive molecule component of Desmosomes. Okay, gee, amazing all of you. The next question is here. Which of the following is the true association lichen planus, malignant melanoma, psoriasis, metabolic syndrome, melasma, malignant melanoma, vitiligo or metabolic syndrome? Vitiligo or metabolic syndrome? Which of the following is the correct answer? Very nice, all of you. Very well done. Please remember the correct answer is option number two. In psoriasis, you can have increased risk of metabolic syndrome, which includes obesity. Hyperlipidemias, obesity, hyperlipidemias, increased blood pressure, diabetes mellitus, all these features, PCOS are seen more frequent in a patient of psoriasis. So the correct match here is option number two. The next question is on your screen. Which of the following infection presents with maculopapular rash? Which of the following infection presence with maculopapular rash dengue rubella shingles or measles dengue rubella shingles or measles which of the following presence with maculopapular rash amazing please remember the correct answer of this question is option number three all of the following infections are present with maculopapular rash except shingles which is herpes zoster and how does herpes zoster present it presents with grouped vesicles unilaterally on a single dermatome clear unilaterally or a single dermatome. So other than this, all other three types given in the question can present with a lot of, uh, you know, uh, macules or papules, but it will never present with the presentations of the cycle. Can you answer this question for me? Inverted saucer-shaped lesion is found in this you all must know that inverted saucer shape is a feature of, I think I've marked the option wrong. Uh, did I mark option number two? Please remember the answer here is borderline. Inverted saucer shape is a feature of BB leprosy. And can you tell me where do you see satellite lesions? Satellite lesion is a feature of BT. They will ask you this question very, very frequently. Please remember the correct answer here is option number three, that is borderline leprosy, not tuberculoid. Okay? In tuberculoid, you tend to see satellite lesion, not borderline or inverted saucer. Can you tell me any other name given to the inverted saucer shape appearance of these lesions? Any alternate name given to it? They are also known as Swiss cheese lesions or punched out lesions. Swiss cheese or punched out lesions. These are the another name given to both of them. Another name given to both of them. 
क्लियर ओके जी चलो जी नेक्स्ट आंसर विच ऑफ दॉलोइंग इज नॉट अ फीचर ऑफ लेप्रा रिएक्शन वेरी नाइस शिवा रवि विजय डॉक्टर तारेक शातनिक नाना क्वाड वेदाश्री प्रियंका गौड़ा समीरा Which of the following is not the feature of lepra reaction? Please remember, you will see fever, which is seen in both either type one or type two. You will see existing lesion getting exacerbated, which is a feature of type one. Appearance of new lesion is a feature of type two, but you will never see fall in ESR. ESR is an acute phase reactant; it will increase in any sort of lepra reaction. whenever you have inflammation you always see increase not decrease of esr and that is why the incorrect statement is option number 4 the incorrect statement is option number 4 what is binkley spot anyone what is binkley spots Binkley spots are seen in diabetic dermopathy, cutaneous sarcoidosis, lupus vulgaris, or rain drop pigmentation. Very nice. Binkley spot is actually an alternate name of diabetic dermopathy. Please remember, it is an alternate name of diabetic dermopathy, also known as diabetic shin spot. Diabetic shin spot. and it has a very very characteristic brownish greenish pigmentation which is because of hemosiderin so what happens in a long standing diabetes because of uh, abnormal ves vascular wall uh, permeability there is a lot of red blood cells which get extra extra visited out of the uh, blood vessels these red blood cells will then get deposited inside the skin and the hemoglobin of the red blood cell will convert into hemosiderin giving a characteristic appearance okay i hope you understood what is diabetic uh, shin spot or binkley spot very very common on the extensors like anterior part of the lower limb elbows forearms etc clear the next question which of the following is not a causative factor for acne which of the following is not a causative factor for acne androgen oily food bacterial proliferation or hypercornification of the duct which of the following is not a causative factor for acne very well then which of the following is not a causative factor of acne please remember oily food is not a feature of acne can you tell me what are the food agents which can precipitate acne we have discussed this question in detail and i'm not explaining it again and again anyone can tell me what are the causes of or what are the food agents which causes increase please remember milk and milk products milk and milk products and high glycemic index food high glycemic index food both these will increase the uh, acne because of increase in insulin like growth factor 1 insulin like growth factor 1 will stimulate the sebum production causing release of a lot of acne form eruptions which of the following is a sub epidermal which of the following is a sub epidermal acantholytic or sub epidermal vesiculobullous disease Darius, bullous impetigo, pemphigus foliaceus, or bullous pemphigoid. Anyone? Very well done, Ravi, Shristi, Vidashri, Shiva, Abhi, Nana, Reshma, Dashrat, Bindu. Pooja, Pragya, Manu, Dr. Giri, Vinita, Insan, Taufik. Very well done, all of you. Please remember, 
bullous impetigo is a sub epidermal disease in darius disease can you tell me what is the level of split anyone what is the level of split in darius disease pragya aruna the level of split in darius disease is supra basal supra basal because it affects desmoglein 3 in bullous impetigo we have sub corneal split and why sub corneal because it affects desmoglein 1 it affects desmoglein 1 and in pemphigus polyaceus also it is sub corneal because it affect desmoglein what so the only one which is at the level of the dermo epidermal junction is option number 4 that is bullous impetigo or uh, bullous pemphigo next question is on a computer screen which of the following is the commonest association of para neoplastic pemphigus anybody can tell me which of the following is the common associations of para neoplastic pemphigus CLL thymoma non Hodgkin's lymphoma or Castleman's disease very well done very nice all of you please remember the correct answer for this question is non hodgkins lymphoma now all these four malignancies are associated with para neoplastic pemphigus but the commonest is non hodgkins lymphoma can you tell me against which component you see auto antibodies in a patient of para neoplastic pemphigus anyone against which component you see auto antibodies it is against no i am asking para neoplastic pemphigus so vp180 has nothing to do with it please remember you have antibodies against the desmoglein as well as against the plaquen group of family against the plaquen group of family which of the following gene when mutated leads to darius disease which of the following gene when mutated give rise to darius disease so can anybody update how many students are live with us right now how many students do we have in our class 99 okay ji good so one more and then we will do a century which of the following gene when mutated leads to darius disease the correct answer is atp2 a2 and atp2 c1 is for haley haley disease atp to c1 is for haley haley disease both these genes corresponds to what both these genes correspond to a calcium channel which is responsible for the function of desmoglein 3 and if there is defective calcium channel the desmoglein 3 becomes defective giving rise to supra basal cleft i hope all of you are understanding this i'm assuming that you all know about this theek hai chalo badhiya the next question is on your computer screen tell me which of the following is the correct answer for bullous pemphigoid very well done all of you the characteristic microscopic feature for bullous pemphigoid is now one thing everybody knows that it is sub epidermal so option number 2 and 3 can be ruled out please give me a thumbs up if you understood till here all of you it is sub epidermal so sub corneal and intra epidermal cannot be the case please give me a thumbs up if you understood till here now you have to choose between sub epidermal acantholytic and sub epidermal non acantholytic what do you mean by acantholytic acantha means keratinocyte and lytic means separation so just think and tell me will you see any acantholysis in a sub epidermal disease yes or no will you see any acantholysis in sub epidermal the answer is no when the level of cleft is below the epidermis how can you see separation of the cells in the epidermis and that is why the option number 1 can never be possible it has to be option number 4 understood separation of keratinocytes can never be seen in the sub epidermal disease it is a feature of intra epidermal disease 
đi lên salary very nice i hope that you all have understood because this is something which is very frequently asked question what is the treatment of nodulocystic acne i think this we have already discussed so very very quickly tell me the answer what is the treatment of nodulocystic acne vulgaris yes very nice shatnik dr rashmi manu uh, abhi sultana shrushti shturya dr cardio nana dr giri vedashri everybody is right the correct answer is isotretinoin and nodulocystic is actually a grade for acne and for grade for acne you always prefer a oral retinoid you always prefer a oral retinoid this is another question i think it's a very interesting and i should say it's a easy question very well done ravi dr cardio shatnik vedashri manu shrishti surya nt abhi pragya vijay lavanya sachi yogesh tara dr sultana and sam very well done all of you very well done please remember the correct answer of this question is three drugs for 12 months now if you remember who have divided leprosy patient into posi basilary and multi basilary For labeling it into posi basilary, you should have skin lesions, either one to five, or plus minus nerve with negative slit skin smear. And for multi basilary, the skin lesion should be more than five, nerve should be more than equals to two, and there should be or there should be slit skin smear positive. For both these conditions, you give three drugs. but the difference is it is given for 6 month in pb and given in 12 months for mb so for multi basilary it is three drugs for 12 month initially we used to give two drugs for posi and three drugs for multi but that is not a case nowadays nowadays we give the same drugs for both the groups clear next question is on your computer screen Which of the following is the common micronutrient deficiency found in a patient with eating disorder? So, what is that micronutrient deficiency which is found in a patient of eating disorder? Very nice, Manu Rashmi. What do you mean by eating disorder? Like anorexia nervosa, okay? Bulimia nervosa, where the either the patient will not eat, and whatever he eats, uh, he will tend to vomit them out. You will see zinc deficiency very very common, and whenever you have zinc deficiency, it is called as acquired in eating disorder. will be associated with diarrhea uh, you know uh, hair loss as well as dermatitic lesions around the perioral region clear all of you i think it's a very straight forward question nothing to be discussed now this is a very interesting question from pct which of the following are associated with porphyria cutanea tarda very nice ravi shrishti rashmi Shatne, Dr. Surya, Aruna, Samira, Manu, Abhi, Sachi, Vijay, Shristi, Venu Gopal, Uma, Subhash, Sultana, Tara. Amazing, all my dear students. First of all, tell me what is the problem in PCT? What is that uh, enzyme which is defective in PCT? This I, I have already told you, so I want the answers from everyone. PCT has deficiency of yes urod or also deoxy no not also deoxy okay uro porphyrinogen d carboxylase uro porphyrinogen d carboxylase 
so what happens this uroporphyrin decarboxylase actually converts the production of uroporphyrinogen to coproporphyrinogen now when this uroporphyrinogen conversion to copro is inhibited you have increase in the uroporphyrins this uroporphyrin is actually water soluble and it will come out of the blood vessel start getting themselves dissolved or deposited into the skin giving rise to formation of bulla and scar now the question is why there is urot enzyme defective or deficiency the reason is development of inhibitors so whenever you have liver problem you have development of inhibitors and these inhibitors will inhibit urot enzyme in the liver so anything which affect the liver like alcohol use hepatitis c or hemochromatosis all of the above will have features of porphyria cutanea tarda understood this point so because of increase what why there is clinical symptoms because of increase in uroporphyrinogen but why there is a uh, defective enzyme this is because of build up of an inhibitor which is seen very commonly in the yes in the liver damage in the liver disorders so whenever you have liver damage liver disorders the inhibitors gets uh, build up and they will start inhibiting uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase very well done all my dear students the first line anti leprosy drug includes all except dapsone thiazetazone clofazamine or rifampicin the first line anti leprosy drug includes all except very nice shatnik vijay shrishti samira dr giri abhi aruna very well done please remember the correct answer is option number 2 which is a second line drug first line drug is rifampicin rifampicin which is given in a dose of 600 mg per month under the supervision of a health care facility second is clofazamine which is given in a dose of 300 mg per month under the supervision of health care facility and 50 mg per day 50 mg per day without any supervision and third is dapsone which has to be taken 100 mg per day without any supervision thiazetazone minocycline they all are second generation drug ofloxacin they are all second generation drug the first line drug is always rifampicin clofazamine and dapsone is this question clear to all of you please remember rifampicin clofazamine and dapsone is the first line treatment it's the first line treatment modality okay ji fine let's move to the next question any confusion with this second line is minocycline ofloxacin thiazetazone many more drugs which can be given ridley joplin classification does not include Ravi, Shristi, Shatnik, Sachi, Abhi, Taufik, Insam, Aruna, Manu, Samira, Dr. Giri, Pooja, Dr. Cardio, Lavanya, Adrenaline. Very well done, all my dear students. Very well done, amazing. now please remember who has or actually there are many classification system but there are two systems which are widely ex, uh, uh, accepted they are ridley joplin classification and indian classification from which you get a lot of question in your exam now ridley joplin classification has used four criteria for classifying the patients clinical bacteriological immunological and histopathological 
while indian classification have used only one classification system that is clinic please give me a quick thumbs up if you understood till here all of you now ridley jopling has classified the patients into five group tt bt bb bl and ll tuberculoid borderline tuberculoid borderline 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 leprosy and nephromatous leprosy while the indian classification have classified the patients into tuberculoid type lepromatous type borderline indeterminate and you have one more that is pure neuritic please remember this classification system is very very important for everyone please remember this classification system is very very important for your exams clear you get very very frequently asked questions first of all on this criteria second the different types the pure neuritic and indeterminate is actually seen in indian classification it is not a feature of ridley jopley so for this question the answer becomes option number 3 clear okay okay The next question is here. Please tell me the answer. Investigation of choice for diagnosis of epidermolysis bullosa. This also we have discussed. I don't know why everybody is uh, is answering option number one. What is epidermolysis bullosa? anyone what is the main pathogenesis in epidermolysis bullosa anybody can tell me the answer what is the main pathogenesis in epidermolysis bullosa patients please remember they have congenital deficiency of one of the genes encoding a protein which is responsible for formation of either the component of epidermis or dermis so it is a congenital condition not acquired dif can only be used when you have auto antibodies but do you have auto antibodies in epidermolysis bullosa no then how come direct immunofluorescence is the answer please remember electron microscopy is the investigation of choice for epidermolysis bullosa group of disorders everyone will give me a quick thumbs up if you understood very very important for your exam please give me a thumbs up manu ravi shatni everyone that the correct answer for this condition is option number 2 clear hai any any confusion theek hai because majority of you have marked option number 1 dif only positive when you have auto antibodies like igg type against uh, desmoglein in pemphigus against the bp antigen in bullus pemphigoid but in epidermolysis bullosa there is no auto antibodies it is the congenital deficiency of one of the component please tell me the answer of this question one of the following is the side effect of clofazamine used in leprosy therapy hyperpigmentation erythema discoloration of the body secretion or macular rash please remember clofazamine it's very commonly known for its hyperpigmentation side effect like uh, uh, this is actually very very visible when you give when you start giving mdt specifically specifically the female patients come to you that Uh, ma'am uh, since i have started the mdt i can see that my color is getting more and more dark so this type of dark pigmentation is actually the side effect of clofazamine which is one of the component of mdt and you are right aruna along with hyperpigmentation the other side effects are dryness of skin and intestinal obstruction okay so these are the three side effects seen with clofazamine Can you tell me discoloration of the body secretion is a side effect of which MDT? 
discoloration of the body secretion is the side effect of which very nice rifampicin rifampicin causes discoloration of all the uh, body fluids okay it causes the discoloration of all the body fluids what about uh, erythema and macular rash this is the side effect of which mdt erythema and macular rash is a very common side effect of depson and that is why it is said that a patient has to report if she or she develops any itching or redness of the body as he or she starts the mdt or he starts the treatment okay so please remember these are some of the side effects which you see very very commonly they will also also ask you the side effects of thalidomide can you tell me what are the side effects of thalidomide anyone can you tell me what are the side effects of thalidomide anyone can tell me the side effects yes teratogenicity and that is why it, it is not given or it is not considered to be a preferred drug it causes phocomelia it causes phocomelia as a side effect very well done vedashri it causes peripheral neuropathy it causes constipation again you are right shatnik what else two more it causes edema peripheral edema and it is known for somnolence patient will complain that he feels more drowsy nowadays somnolence patient feels more drowsy clear or not so teratogenicity peripheral neuropathy constipation edema and somnolence are some of the features which is seen secondary to thalidomide which is seen secondary to thalidomide therapy swiss cheese pattern of lesions are seen in this we have discussed so i don't think that now it is any difficult for you very nice please remember swiss cheese is actually an alternate name for inverted saucer shape appearance and we have discussed that inverted saucer shape appearance is a feature of pb answer i don't know why only 36% have answered this question we have already discussed this swiss cheese pattern is a feature of bb hansons it's a feature of bb hansons and now we have the last question of the today's session pseudo porphyrias are due to what do you mean by pseudo porphyrias they have clinical features very similar to porphyria scarring bulla on the sun exposed areas but there is no heme synthesis defect so where do you see pseudo porphyrias photosensitive drugs hemodialysis sun beds or all of the above very nice ravi vijay abhi dr sultana shatnik surya rashmi vedashri manu pooja sachi tara yogesh reshma dr cardio very well done all of you please remember pseudo porphyrias are the features of all of the above all these three agents causes pseudo porphyria uh, in these patients they can have photosensitivity development of blisters but there is no heme synthesis defects okay so with this we are done with the today's session i hope you have enjoyed this i request everybody to please be a part of an academy family there are many many new batches which are or which have already started i request all of you to please subscribe to an academy using the referral code chesta10 you can get iconic subscription of 1 year which is the best selling and you can use a 3 month or 6 month of plus which is also very very hot selling uh, subscriptions of an academy ravi tomorrow same time at 2:30 pm i will be launching the class soon 2:30 pm is the time of the tomorrow's session as well and the leader board is here please do subscribe all of you please subscribe on academy using the referral code chesta tech so bye bye take care good day we'll meet again on the same time with another set of interesting question uh, from tomorrow i will be starting the image based session in dermatology so one liners we are almost done with all the one liners and now the image based sessions will be the next series bye bye take care and good day